Okay, let's start. Uh, thank you all for coming. Welcome to this uh, new series um, that we uh, launched with the uh, the engineering workforce development of the Center for Quantum Network and the Yale Quantum Institute. Uh, we are delighted to be here. My name is Florian Kahl. I'm the, man the manager of the, uh, the Yale Quantum Institute. And um, I will be moderating this, uh, this panel uh, with my colleague, uh, Russell Bayer. Um, so this series, um, we, we, we are kickstarting this series with one event uh, today uh, about uh, prepare for college, because we've realized that um, building quantum technology is something that requires a lot of people uh, with different backgrounds. We need physicists, we need electrical engineer, we need computer scientists, software engineer, chemist. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of trades that we need, and it can be very overwhelming to consider a career in quantum science and information. And so by, by attending this session today, um, you will hear from college students, from staff and faculty in the field, what it's like to, to work in quantum. And we hopefully you can get advice on uh, navigating the various pathway uh, that you can take. So um, this, um, this event uh, will be recorded. Um, so a little bit of technical details on the Zoom. Uh, we can only, you can only see and hear the panelists. Um, you have a feature at the bottom of your screen that uh, has uh, the Q&A panel. Uh, so if you click on it, you should be able to type your questions. Um, and then you can also um, put a thumbs up on the question you want uh, answer the most. And so the, the most recursive question will go to the top. And then uh, Russell and I will go through them and ask to the panelists. Um, there's also um, closed captioning if you want. And this, uh, this will be recorded. And you can um, watch it later on demand. Um, before we start, um, I would like to introduce uh, my colleague, Russell Bayet, um, and he will be uh, the second moderator with me, and he's going to say a few words. Thanks, Lauren. So yeah, I'm Russell Ballier. I'm with the Center for Quantum Networks, uh, and specifically with the Engineering Workforce Development Team. I'm the Assistant Director. Uh, so just real quick, a little bit about the Center for Quantum Networks. It's a uh, National Science Foundation funded center that just got started uh, late last year. Uh, and we are we are a part of uh, 10 different institutions, or sorry, there are 10 institutions in our center, including Yale. Um, I'm specifically with the University of Arizona, which is the lead institution. Um, and so the Center for Quantum Networks uh, got started because we one of our big goals is to help lay the foundation for a socially responsible quantum internet, which some of you have probably heard about, uh, hoping that this is going to spur new technology industries, uh, competitive marketplace for quantum service providers, and application uh, developers for the benefit of all. Uh, like I said, I'm specifically with the engineering workforce development team. So a lot of what our goals are uh, include trying to develop the future workforce to be a part of the quantum internet and help develop it and also help develop uh, the quantum network. Um, so a lot of what we do is uh, outreach um, with, and trying to educate people and try to get people interested in the quantum internet and technologies and all this kind of stuff that some of, some of you are going to hear about today. So uh, real quick, if there are any teachers out there, um, we are looking for some classes classrooms to actually run some virtual field trips where students will get to kind of have an interactive peek into some of the cool stuff that happens in these labs that are doing things related to the quantum internet and quantum networks. So, and so I don't think Florian mentioned this, but why, how he got interested in quantum, but uh, to be honest, I actually have no background, background in quantum. Um, I'm a, I have a PhD in geology. So a lot of this is new to me and I'm going to be learning a lot, but um, for me, I think kind of one of the cool things about quantum is just how interesting it is and just kind of the weird, crazy stuff that goes on with, uh, with quantum. So thanks Florian. Thank you, Rizal. Um, so before we uh, introduce uh, the panelists, um, since we cannot see you, uh, we've, uh, we thought that it would be fun to have uh, a little poll um, happening in the chat. So you will see a poll and then you can tell us uh, what is your interest, are you interested in, in STEM, in the career in STEM, and so we can learn a little bit more and make sure that we target or, or answer to, uh, to, to your needs. So the, the poll uh, should pop up in your screen right now. 
and then I will start uh, with the, the panelists. Um, so maybe let's start with, um, so you can start um, uh, turning on your webcam. Uh, thank you all for being here. And then we can start with uh, maybe uh, Shantanu, if you want to uh, introduce yourself and, and tell us uh, all about uh, what you do. Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks so much for having me here. Uh, um, you know, uh, I would really enjoy um, going to such an event if I were starting off and if I were interested. So um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, my name is Shantanu Cha. I'm, I recently graduated from Yale this past December. Um, while I was there, I studied physics and math. And I started off in quantum information science by doing research with Professor Gervin, one of the other panelists uh, here today. Um, later, I, I uh, did research in, in Professor Devere's group in quantum engineering, where I built superconducting systems, quantum platforms, on to which we realized um, qubits and other cool things. Um, I also founded the Yale Undergrad Quantum Computing Org, and we can talk a bit about that later. Um, but through that, I was able to meet a lot of cool people and um, make a, a lot of cool projects. Yeah, so really happy to be here. Hello. Thank you. Um, Ayala, do you want to, to go next? Yeah, I would love to. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Ayala Kalfas. I'm a rising sophomore at Yale majoring in physics, and I'm the director of partnerships at UQC, the organization that Shantanu started this past year. So it was actually a dark November night during quarantine when I received an email from YQI about the upcoming lecture that night, why you should care about quantum computers. And I had no plans for that night, so I decided it'd be a fun night activity for my family. I set up the TV in our living room and we started watching. And I hadn't really realized that quantum computers were something that existed outside of Marvel movies. And as I sat there watching, I just realized that this was an amazing, exciting, interdisciplinary field that combined a lot of my interests and I started to see a future for myself within that field and then a few days later I got an email about the formation of UQC this undergraduate quantum computing club so I joined and since then I've only grown more and more enthusiastic about quantum computing and my place in it at Yale, I'm also the outreach chair for women in physics. I'm involved with the Student Film Festival. I'm currently co-directing a mini documentary, and I'm actually going to be doing research with Professor Gervin this summer, and I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you so much. Well, this is the perfect transition then uh, for Steve to, to go next. Hi. I'm Steve Gervin. I'm professor of physics and professor of applied physics at Yale. I also have temporarily a half-time position at Brookhaven National Laboratory, where I'm the director of the Co-Design Center for Quantum Advantage, one of the five national quantum information science research centers recently funded by the Department of Energy. I'm the faculty advisor to the club that Shantanu and Ayelet um, are helping uh, run. And uh, I'm a theoretician. I work with pencil and paper and computers rather than hardware, but I, I think closely about quantum hardware. And uh, I'm part of the team that invented um, the basic architecture for using superconducting qubits to, to try to build quantum computers that's been adopted by Google and IBM and Rigetti and other companies around the world and lots of academic places. And maybe one fun fact about myself, uh, I grew up in a small village in Northern New York State and there were five kids in my high school class. Thanks a lot. Um, and then uh, our last panelist, Kelly, do you want to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Ratliff, and I am on the recruitment and admissions team for the College of Engineering here at the University of Arizona, which, as you heard, is one of the partner institutions for the Center for Quantum Network. So I'm really excited to be here today. 
I am not a scientist or a physicist, uh, but I help support the students who will be our future scientists and physicists. So uh, I work with incoming first year students and incoming transfer students and help them determine their path forward into a STEM engineering or maybe even a quantum career. So I'm really pleased to be a part of this excellent group and I look forward to chatting with you all today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I can uh, follow up on that saying that there's also a lot of career, like when we think about career in quantum, uh, we automatically think about uh, scientists, uh, we think about a, a lot of uh, people like working on uh, quantum science, but there's also a lot of people in the background. And one of the last events that we will have in this series will be with uh, alternative careers for people who um, are supporting all the staff and all these efforts. Um, so we will have that probably uh, in December. Um, okay, let's uh, kick uh, start things. With, uh, sorry, let's uh, start these things with uh, our first question. So I think this question will uh, be uh, more for um, our two uh, panelists, uh, Ayelet and Shantanu. Um, can you tell us a little bit more, like, what's your experience in in college, and like, how did you uh, find out what you wanted to do, and how did you decide to study quantum? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to start it off. So one of the best pieces of advice I received from any professor my first year was one of my professors was talking about who, how kids who found success in their high school career are often really too scared to pivot to something else and try something new. I actually entered Yale as a neuroscience major. I felt very secure in that. And then during my first year, I fell in love with physics. And I felt like, should I change, should I not? And then because of this professor's advice, I decided to go for it. And now in my second year, since I started Yale, I'm falling in love with the intersection of physics and computer science, specifically quantum computing. And I guess my biggest piece of advice is to maintain an open attitude, take classes that interest you, and be willing to embrace changes in what you want to study. Yeah, absolutely. Um... You know, I think when I entered, uh, or when I was first interested in quantum information science, it was because of all the potential, right? Like the potential of quantum advantage, the potential to impact, you know, uh, create impact across industries. That really interested me. Uh, and the reason why I actually stuck in quantum information science, um, I mean, it was absolutely very interesting, um, but it was because of the people around me, um, because of the communities that I was able to you know, take part in because of my uh, roommate from my second year, uh, how we kind of work together, you know, work through some of these concepts. And, and I think because of that community, I was able to really like prosper and, and, or, and, and continue um, to develop my interest into now what is my passion and what I'll probably continue to do for the rest of my life, yeah. Uh, so since you since you were talking, can you say a little bit more about the, uh, the Yale Quantum Computing Club that you organize? Absolutely. Long. Yeah, absolutely. And that you helped us launch, Florian. Um, but yeah, last fall, we created the Yale undergrad quantum computing group. Um, looking back, I think there are three reasons that I um, started up this group. The first was to uh, make that community, right, that I talked about, because you know, I was lucky enough to have a, a suite mate who was interested in the same thing, but having like a club, having an, sort of um, an organization, um, there for students who are just starting out, uh, who are really interested and who need that sort of support network would be um, very useful. So that was the first thing to build community. The second thing was um, because I wanted to reach people who didn't, um, who, who were interested in quantum computing, but they didn't have this sort of background in physics or computer science, right? They came from other STEM fields, they came from non-STEM fields um, and they had that amazing potential to make impact, but they didn't I mean, no one had really like told them that, you know, this is something that you can do. Um, so yeah, so it was, a, it was a cool club where people from interdisciplinary um, backgrounds could come in and create impact. And the third reason was because I wanted to work on cool projects. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to work on cool projects with people from different backgrounds and different perspectives. And I think that's where the coolest projects come from um, when you have people that are coming from different backgrounds. Yeah, so, and I think all those three reasons were um, achieved and will continue to I guess, like be met in the coming years. Thank you. 
Um, the fact that we're mixing so many people across so many disciplines is also um, the challenge of this of this technology and, and this field because we are, are going to need a lot of people and so there's there's not a single it's it's great for all of you uh, trying to consider career in in quantum but it's also a little bit difficult for us to give you one answer because you can enter the field in so many different ways um, that's something that's uh, very challenging and I think the, uh, the the U.S. is trying to uh, to, to uh, help that um, by launching initiative like the 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 quantum post, uh, the Center for Quantum Network for all the different hubs, national hubs of the quantum initiatives. Uh, and it's um, is it something that you can talk a little bit more about, uh, Steve, about this center? Yeah. So. Um... A first thing to understand is that quantum computing is at a very early stage, right? You know, it's maybe we've invented the quantum abacus or, or uh, you know, some very crude versions of computers exist, but they're not that useful yet. And so we have many problems to solve and it's going to take a while. So young people your age are are needed to come into the field to help us solve these problems over the next 10 or 20 years or however long it takes. And um, so the center that I direct, C2QA, is a very large national center. There are 24 institutions, uh, five federal labs, 18 universities, and IBM as our industrial partner because they have experience. Uh, you know, physicists are not system uh, builders uh, or even computer scientists. And so, you know, people with industrial experience are, of course, valuable. And the tech not what's called the technology readiness level is just very low there are many many problems to solve and you can contribute uh, whether you're a mechanical engineer or electrical engineer or a computer scientist a physicist uh, um, a material scientist a chemist uh, they're just we're trying to invent an entirely new type of technology and no one person or even no group of people all from the same background could possibly solve all the cha engineering challenges that, uh, that we face. So uh, it's, um, that again means there are many routes for you to enter this field. And it means that centers like the one that I direct are important precisely because they bring together people who haven't been talking to each other before. So I now have a chance, I'm now collaborating with computer scientists that I had, you know, I just, I know very little about computer science. That they know, I know a little, they know a little bit about physics and a little bit about quantum computing. And we're working together to try to think about how do you write programs for quantum computers how do you compile them how do you get them to work even though the hardware is still not very reliable um, there are people that are um, electronic you know work with high speed electronics there are people that um, uh, you know just come from all kinds of backgrounds and um, so it's it's um, really an opportunity to build communities with uh, diverse backgrounds to try to tackle these big challenges. Well, speaking of that, like, how do you um, how like you have all these avenues to enter this field, but like, how do you decide? Um, which one is good for you? Um, can uh, one of you uh, panelists tell me like if you had like what kind of experience you had uh, to sort of like try different things? Like is there tools online that you can use? Like what kind of uh, activities you can do? Uh, I'm hinting at maybe a hackathon. 
just just some just some hints. <laughs> does one does uh, one of you want to talk about that? Yeah, I can say a bit about um, expand on that hint. Yeah, we had this fantastic event, the Quantum Coalition Hack, that you know I have helped lead, and this was this is really incredible event because I mean we had sponsorship from companies across the world. So our biggest sponsors were IBM and QControl and Google, and we had a ton of other sponsors. And I think the, the coolest thing though, was that we had uh, 2000 people sign up, um, 1,400 uh, 1, people participate in some way and 200 teams of, of like three to five people submit projects. And this, this shows how much interest there is out there. And this hackathon was conducted completely virtually Right, so without needing to go into a lab, without needing to even have very um, a very strong laptop, we had sponsors that would provide online interfaces uh, that you could use um, if you didn't have very powerful computing tools at home. So I think this is a testament to how many resources now exist on the cloud that are free to use. Um, I so I I also um, I, I also am a, an IBM Kiskit advocate. So uh, I've had some experience with, with Kiskit, with contributing to um, Kiskit, which is open source. And I can, I can say, for sure, at least for Kiskit, um, there's a, there are a ton of uh, tutorials. There's, yeah, there's a wonderful online interface of IBM Quantum Experience. Um, and there's a really vibrant community out there. So there's like a, a, like a popping Slack channel where you can just uh, ask, you know, if you're, Coming in from if you're an industry professional, if you're a, a college student, if you're a high school student, you can just go there and, and get some help and get started. And this is one of the many, you know, many uh, tools out there. So um, definitely, if you're interested, I would say there are tools out there to support you. There are communities out there to support you. And the best way to get started is to, you know, go through one of these intro tutorials um, if you're interested in, in quantum information science. So the one I just want to add. Go ahead, go ahead. One, thank you so much. I just want to add one more note on the hackathon. So I had just joined UQC as director of partnerships, but as I mentioned, I had literally had my first quantum computing lecture a month before, and then it was my responsibility to reach out to all of these sponsors and ask them to join our hackathon. And it felt like a pretty big request, and I was very nervous being a beginner to the field. But I was amazed by how dedicated these sponsors were to bringing in the next generation and specifically to bringing in new perspectives. I think that's kind of what's special about the quantum computing community is that people really understand the need for interdisciplinary collaboration and they're really open to bringing in beginners. That's just been really reassuring and exciting for me as a beginner to this field. Um, so there's a so all the resources online. Like I think if you just uh, do a quick search on 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 Google about um, these different things, you will be able to find them. Um, the, a few uh, things that we can point out is that um, so IBM has a lot of resources. Uh, Kiskit has a lot of also uh, resources and tutorial. Google um, has uh, also a series of uh, videos online. Um, Microsoft is starting to uh, ramp up their, their programming. So they, they have uh, more and more things. And one thing that um, I can find out, uh, if you give me a second so I can change my slide, um, there's this uh, school, um, so you can see it on my webcam, um, the uh, qubitbycubit.org um, is a website um, that has a ton of resources. And they are currently uh, hosting summer camp for middle school, high school, and college students. And uh, we have also a quantum, uh, I mean, not we, but like they also have a quantum summer school for uh, researchers. So there's, uh, there's a lot of things uh, available. And one of the, the advice that I will give you if, you, if you're interested in the field, but you don't know exactly what to do, um, it's really to try to follow tutorials. There's like some very short uh, exercise and some like, it's almost the shape of a homework and you can like uh, starting with uh, a compiler and like try to, to test um, your very first code on the quantum computers. Uh, and so to, to follow on that, Steve, could you tell uh, us a little bit more because I know that you use um, the IBM uh, experience for your classes. Um, can you tell a little bit more about the interaction of the, uh, of the students with these uh, quantum computers? Sure, so I'm presently teaching an undergraduate course at Yale, Physics 345, 
and the you you don't have to have any background in physics um, to take it. The only prerequisite is to know a little bit about linear algebra, solving sets of simultaneous equations, basically. And um, so I give you know some lectures on the background and then when students have a little background they can start programming and doing homework assignments on the ibm quantum experience uh, florian is putting up the uh the uh one of the interfaces that you can use and it's very simple drag and drop uh graphical interface to start you don't even have to write code you just drop different quantum gates or operations into a circuit. And there's a lot of um, uh, online tutorials uh, with IBM Q and with Qiskit to show you how to use this. And it's a lot of fun. Students really enjoy uh, playing. This is completely free. You can have access. I, you know, uh, as a Professor, I, I'm a member of the education network at IBM, and so we have a little extra access to the machines, but uh, anybody anywhere in the world is welcome to log in and start playing with these at, at no charge. So if you're curious to learn a little bit about, uh, you know, try your hand at some simple, very simple programs, then you can just uh, go ahead and start today. Um, we have a question in the, the Q&A panel for uh, Yu Shantanu. Um, so Isaac said that uh, he imagines that creating an undergrad club uh, on such a complex and advanced subject is not pretty easy. Uh, he, he would be interested in knowing how you prepared and, and study in order to like empower enough people to propose the creation of this club. Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. And you know, something that I grappled with when I was going to start this, uh, when I was thinking of starting this organization, you know, because Yale has a really rich history in, in quantum information science and quantum engineering. And here I thought, you know, um, is it is it okay for me to create a club like this? And I think what motivated me was we had an interest meeting. And there are a lot of undergraduates um, that were interested in, in, in such a club, right? There, and there, they came, we, we actually, I, so I like to look at the numbers and we had, um, I think we had like 10 or 15 different majors outside of physics and, and computer science and, and, and math um, that were interested in, in joining such a club, right? That wouldn't have had access to these amazing resources, this like rich history that, and graduate community at Yale, if not for a club like this. So that's why I, that's why I continued with it. I, that's how I got the motivation and asked for how I got the uh, resources to support this. I found that a lot of the resources were, were uh, already kind of um, there and I just had to reach out to ask. So I asked Professor Gerben and he was really helpful. And I asked Florian, he was very, very helpful. And, and I think the best thing that I, I, I could have done and I did was um, gather a really talented board um, of people, right, who were like I it we're really enthusiastic about about such a such a venture. So I, I should note, you know, that's like more of like a motivation and a little bit of advice surround yourself by people who are interested and passionate if you're trying to start a club like this. And on a more practical note, um, this uh, quantum coalition hack that we mentioned before is not going to be contained to quantum uh, the quantum coalition hack. It, it's actually kind of like a cool um, network of of universities um, across the world. So if you if you're if you're at a university and you need some um, support in starting a club, you can just join our Discord, go to our site quantumcoalition.io, um, and we're also going to host a webinar where we kind of talk about how to create a club. And this is, I mean, the, the, I know there are a ton of resources out there, and so we're going to try to work with everyone so that we're not like so that so that we're so that we're taking full advantage of all the synergies. Um, so. The point, the main point there is that there are people who are interested in, in such a thing. And um, there are a lot of people who are interested in working with you to create um, cool clubs like quantum computing clubs.
And, and I can add, out, uh, add to this that um, there was an, an opinion piece uh, written, I think, six months ago. Uh, and then the, the main concern and the main limiting factor of uh, quantum science will be the workforce, because we are at the point where we don't have enough people trained on all of this field. And so the, the reason why it's so important these days and, and why everybody uh, from the tech giants to the university to the high school teachers that like really trying to bring together the workforce is because that's gonna be the limiting factor. And so you can, I think you can use that to your advantage and like reach out to people uh, and say like, oh, I'm this, uh, I'm a high school student, I'm interested in doing that. Can you help me do that? And like, I'm pretty sure you will have all your answer like, yes, please here, like we can help you with this thing. These are some resources here, like you can read onto that. Um, and so that's really something that's gonna be, um, so the field is uh, it's challenging because it's a new field. And so it's gonna be a lot of work for everybody, but there's also, we are in the really good shape uh, right now. This is the perfect time to join this field um, because that's gonna be the, the time where everybody wants you and have. somebody with a quantum background will be uh, really looked for uh, on the job market after that. And so since uh, this, this session is to, to prepare for, for college and or like if you're like on, a, on your first year of college, maybe we can ask Kelly, like what are the, uh, the advice that you can give as a recruiter to like, what, how, to, how can you put your best chances uh, to, uh, to enter um, a college and, and then study this field? Sure. So I can kind of speak from the perspective of our engineering program at the University of Arizona. And it's good to keep in mind uh, that every institution is going to be different in terms of their process and the programs they offer. Uh, but as we mentioned, you know, it's the cool thing about this field is that you can come at it from a variety of different backgrounds. So I loved Ilet's advice about having an open mind. And I think that is super important as you're going through your college search process, as you're thinking about what you want to major in. And it is okay as a high school student to not know today or when you're applying what exactly you want to do for the next four years. So that's one of my biggest pieces of advice too, is to just be curious, have an open mind and pursue the things that you really enjoy. Um, so the way our program at the University of Arizona is set up in our engineering school is actually all of our engineering students come into the college they don't choose a major right away so we have a built-in first semester course where you actually meet all now 16 we just added a major in software engineering uh, that was announced uh this week <laughs> so we have 16 programs now that you get to pick from so if you have a career path in mind you may find a variety of majors that really speak to what your future goal is. So if your future goal is in quantum, uh, you may want to pursue physics instead of engineering. You may want to pursue uh, software engineering or material science. I know our department head here in material science at the University of Arizona, um, he's also working on a, a quantum computing project using sound. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can add on to your college experience outside of your major. So these research opportunities, internships, those are all things that can supplement you as you're going through. So it's okay to not know right now exactly what the next four years are gonna look like. Just keep an open mind. And I would say uh, as you know, my advice as an admissions person is if you're interested in a career um, in any one of the science fields or engineering or math in high school, uh, pursue as many of those courses as you can. As as much math, especially calculus based math for engineering, that's super important for us. Uh, math and science in high school, take whatever you can, get involved in clubs, uh, whatever they may be, whether it's coding or robotics or whatever interests you. And you're gonna have a great foundation coming in, having taken those courses. Um, and it's really gonna set you up for success, You know, transitioning into college level physics, chemistry, calculus, all of those things coming in your first year. So. There's lots of ways to slice it, but um, I would say the, the more that you can pursue those foundations in high school, um, the more prepared and, and confident you'll feel coming into a university setting uh, where you're using all of those skills and, and building upon them. Thank you. Um, we're going to take a question from uh, Jimmy in the, in the, the Q&A panel. 
uh, he said that he, comp he recently completed the IBM uh, uh, QXQ uh, coding school. And uh, there's like a, a lot of online school that you can take. Uh, and uh, most of the position I've seen are for PhDs or engineers. Uh, and so um, it's, I think that's the case for now. A uh, lot of people, since we're at the very beginning of the, of the field, um, the, it's, it's much easier for a research center to develop this kind of, of work. But I think it's gonna expand to different kind of, uh, different kind of, uh, of position. But um, can, can one of you in the panel tell us like, what do you think the, uh, the, the, the workforce will be in, in the short term and in the long term? Like, will it be a shift between like only PhDs or is it gonna be the, part, the turn of like more engineers, more masters? What kind of diploma should you get um, it, for now? I know it's a, it's a bit of a tough question because we don't know what the field's gonna look like, but if one of you can, uh, can uh, try to, uh, to hinder that, that would be great. I mean, I, I could actually maybe chime in a little bit about this. Um, so just, kind of based on some of the research that's out there, just because things are, and some of this is my opinion too, but just kind of early on, since a lot of this is still being figured out and developed, that there's kind of a, a need for PhD, PhDs and kind of scientists to kind of lay that groundwork. Um, and then later on for, you know, for master's um, students and so on to kind of then come in and execute these things. Um, so that's kind of my thought. You know, I could add a little bit. I mean, you know, right now, quantum computers are hand assembled, mostly by PhDs, uh, mostly physicists, some engineers. But, um, you know, the field is evolving so rapidly and there's no, there's no way that we can, um, you know, expect somebody to, to become an electrical engineer and then take another six years and get a PhD also in quantum physics. We have to find ways for people to start contributing, giving them, give them easy ways to learn enough about the basics of quantum so they can bring their expertise from whatever field they're in to bear on the numerous problems that we're, we're trying to solve. So this is actually a big question uh, in industry and for the federal government right now. How do we learn how to do that? Um, I'm part of a panel that was at an NSF, National Science Foundation workshop to try to figure out just how do you create courses for undergrads uh, to get them introduced to quantum and what should the requirements be and what should you teach and what should you teach at, for the beginners and the more advanced students. And we're still, it's such a new field, we're still figuring this out. Um, but, and going back to the things that Kelly was saying earlier, um, you know, what is the best you can contribute, you can get into this field from any, almost any field. Um, and what you should pick to work on in college is just whatever you're excited about. It doesn't matter. Um, when you go, you know, you can use that as um, some expertise in that area, plus a little study or one course or you know, personal effort to learn a little bit about quantum to get yourself an entree. It really doesn't matter. It's more important to be passionate about something and use that passion to, to learn uh, than to say, oh, I wanna get into quantum and I should study this even though it's not the thing I'm most excited about. That's, that's a mistake. Um, and, you know, you're gonna, you're going to major in something in college. You may change your mind what, what your major is. Uh, that's, to, that's what college is for. It's the one time in your life when you can explore and try out things. Um, and after college, you, you, know, you might decide to go to graduate school and get a master's degree, and it might be in a different field. It might go, you might move from engi electrical engineering to physics or vice versa. That's not uncommon. And so uh, don't, you know, 
don't try to think there's some absolutely single best route to take. Uh, there are many ways in and you should take the one with the most interesting scenery along the route. <laughs> That's, yeah. uh, that's a very good point um, to talk about personal experience uh, when I was never really like in high school I really hated school I didn't really want to to continue so I went to uh, an, a vocational school for two years and then slowly and slowly I was like well you you've done enough work and then maybe you can do an engineering school in the back and then and then I, I went to a grad school and then I went to postdoc and then you, you end up in this position. And so really, um, like if you have a plan, that's great, but also there's a ton of opportunities everywhere. And so if you if you limit yourself to one thing, you might miss out on really uh, fascinating opportunities that you might have. Um, yeah, college is a, is a really good time for that uh, to try to figure out um, what, to, um, what to do and what you like and what you don't like, because sometimes it's also very... Uh, much easier to figure out what you don't like. Uh, you take one class of intro of, I don't know, um, something about, uh, I don't want to like pinpoint on, on the matter because somebody's going to be mad <laughs> since we have so many uh, people presented here. But um, yeah, you will, uh, you will quickly realize if you, if you like the subject or not, and then you can, uh, you can decide what to do. Yeah, maybe I can add a quick note from the perspective mm -hmm. of someone who, you know, was looking at some of these job opportunities, um, both to collect them for our club and also just because I was a little bit interested, because um, I'm working currently, um, but I, and I'm working for a bit before I go to grad school. I'm working as a software engineer, and that's my first point. So the two of the skills that you develop when um, working in, in quantum information science, working on these projects are very transferable. And that goes both ways, right? Like you can come in from any background, you can also um, pursue any, like a lot of different things afterwards. So it's a very worthwhile effort. Um, and when going to college, um, one of the pieces of advice that I give is, yeah, do what you want to do. Um, and also, if you're interested in something, don't be afraid of like really diving deep and and um, getting your hands dirty. Uh, yeah, that will be well. You, that will be time well spent. Um, yes. Yeah, so yeah. So another thing I want to note is I, I looked at these job postings and I've seen some really cool roles pop up. So at companies like Amazon and Google, I see software developer roles pop up that don't require a PhD background. So this is kind of like to the point of building the infrastructure, right? Um, necessary to achieve, you know, something like quantum advantage um, at a large scale. You don't just, you don't need like, you don't just need um, physics uh, PhDs. Um, you also need uh, software engineers and, and a lot of other people like throughout the stack, right? So to speak of, of quantum computing. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of transferable skills and there are opportunities that are already popping up and will continue to pop up. Maybe that's a, that's a good time to um, present the, the upcoming events that we have in this series. Um, give me one second. Um, here we go. Because since there's so many careers, um, we have a, a series of events. So the next one will be for um, preparing for grad school, because of course, um, as somebody mentioned, uh, PhD are very important right now. But then we have, uh, we have some uh, more panels to cover, like most of, the, most of the different positions that you can get. So grad school will be in June. In August, we will have for faculty members, for young uh, postdocs uh, who wants to go in academia and try uh, to get tenure in a university. In October, we'll have uh, a panel on startups. So all the, the work that has been done uh, by the startups and most of the, uh, most of the quantum computer, uh, the big player in the role uh, started from startups from university. So it's, I think we had the phase where the startup are transitioning into these big uh, tech giants. So that's, that's gonna be an exciting, uh, an exciting time. And then in December, we'll have uh, for industry jobs and uh, what you can do to make yourself um, more uh, valuable in the, the field. And I think that will be uh, one that um, will be very interesting. Like we had a couple of questions about that in the, in the chat. Um, we are almost running out of time. Uh, maybe we can uh, loop back to uh, each of you and you can tell us like, you know, in a minute or so, like what, um, like your, uh, your hot take on uh, how we could uh, prepare for college and like what's, what's the, the advice you can give uh, our audience. Uh, maybe I should uh, start. Who wants to start?
Uh, let's, I'm going to pinpoint on that. Uh, Ayla, do you want to start uh, the, the uh, last word on, on that? Yeah, sure. I do want to reiterate what I said before and what Kelly echoed about maintaining an open attitude. And I also want to emphasize that you can find a way to contribute to quantum if you have a desire to learn. It is often an intimidating field, but you, if you have that desire to learn, no matter how beginner you are, you can find a way to contribute. Uh, Anthony? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so on, on a, I guess, more general advice note, uh, try to find someone with, um, with whom you can actually learn this material. That's really helpful to have someone there to motivate you. Um, and on a more practical note, if you're interested in um, like quantum information science in particular and actually running these circuits, I would say the only requisite would be um, learning a bit about how matrices uh, work with each other. So like how they add and how they multiply vectors. And um, I think that's, that's like from a practical standpoint. Um, and in terms of opportunities, you don't have to wait for an internship. You don't have to wait for um, like some opportunity to come, um, come up in terms of like a formal program. You can start contributing to open source uh, projects. If you're, for example, if you're interested in computer science, um, you can find the Qiskit, uh, the GitHub's, the Qiskit GitHub's um, at, uh, repos, and you can and you can start uh, contributing right away. So yeah, so uh, don't be afraid to get started. Find someone to help motivate you um, and to bounce off ideas with. And uh, if you can, if you're interested, um, try to learn a bit about linear algebra. I think that'll be really helpful. Russell. So I think I'll echo kind of some of the stuff that's come up here is find, find a major, find a field that you're interested in, you know, do some research about the different pathways. Um, we've talked about some of them today, but I think find something that you really enjoy and that you can be passionate about, and you'll find a way in to, you know, the, the quantum workforce. Um, and just keep an eye out for different opportunities to get involved with outreach or some of the extracurriculars that we've talked about. I think that's going to be really important because that's more of a informal kind of laid back way to kind of test, you know, um, if you're going to enjoy this and, and making connections with people too at those events. Jenny? Sure, I guess uh, one maybe kind of different thing that we haven't discussed that's on my mind this week is uh, May 1st, as you may have heard, is traditional kind of National College Decision Day. So I've been talking to a lot of high school students and parents this week who are just really worried. They don't want to make the wrong decision and uh, in their words. And so I would just say, uh, don't worry a lot about something like that. There are so many wonderful programs in the US and around the world related to these fields. And really, it's just about finding a place that you feel like it's a place you want to spend the next four years that feels comfortable to you that feels welcoming to you and so um, don't worry so much about picking the wrong school or the wrong program or the wrong major you'll find your path as you go through college and really it's about uh, finding a place that feels like home to you so if you're able to do campus visits when you're doing your college search or or talking to other students i know one of the things i do a lot in my job is um, connect high school students to current undergrads to talk about things like research or their experience or, or internships or whatever it may be so um, just have an open mind um, apply to any place that interests you and then um, if you can try to visit and and focus on picking a place that feels like you um, and and you'll be successful thank you steve last word uh yeah so you know like uh, just as it's easier to learn languages when you're young i think it's easier to learn mathematics when you're when you're young and so the as Shantanu mentioned, really the minimum mathematics you need to know about to enter this field is linear algebra, how to solve simultaneous equations, how to work with matrices and vectors. And there are um, 
uh, wonderful websites like Three Blue One Brown, where you can uh, see amazingly uh, wonderful videos that teach you these things. And um, you can start there, you can take a course when you get to college. Uh, and I would, I would learn that first, I would you know, probability and statistics turns out to also be an important part of quantum because the measure there's a certain randomness in the way quantum mechanics works. And that's a very, very important area anyway in modern data-driven society. And so that'll be a skill, even if you end up not going into quantum or not even going into science, It'll make you a better citizen. You can you can understand um, you know uh, uh, the statistics that people are using to argue uh, for different policies. So um, I would uh, if you had to pick one thing to suggest you study, it's um, discrete mathematics. Great. Okay. Uh, so we're going to conclude on this uh, on this thing. Thank you all uh, to the panel. Uh, thank you all for attending, and I thank you also for your time. Um, for all the panelists who are here, I hope um, you learned a lot about what we're doing. We have uh, posted in the chat a lot of uh, links. Um, so we had some of the um, the, the videos that we're talking about, um, people one brown, some of the the websites that you can find all the resources, and then otherwise uh, Google is really helpful. If you do a quick search, you should find a ton of things, and don't forget to uh, to ask people. So that would be great. Thank you all, and uh, we hope to see you uh, next time. Uh, so yeah, our next event will be uh, if I pick the dates, will be on June 18 at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time and 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So if you're interested in that, um, please uh, let us uh, know you uh, in your registration, you had a, a place to um, receive email for the upcoming event. So we will be send that, um, we will send that shortly. Thank you all and have a great uh, rest of your morning, rest of your afternoon or everywhere you are in the world. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks everyone.